Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Beyond Pain podcast with myself, Joe Lavaca, and Joe Gambino. In today's episode, Joe and I share our insights on manual therapy and how it fits into your rehab. We do not propose changing manual therapy, although we definitely recommend changing and challenging some of the narratives behind it. We hope you enjoy this episode and all future episodes of the Beyond Pain podcast. And if you do, please remember to like and comment, subscribe, and maybe most importantly, share this episode with someone else if you think it could help them. Without further ado, here is episode 15 on our take about manual therapy. Welcome to the Beyond Pain Podcast with your host, Joe Gambino and Joe Lavaca. Join the two Joes, two physical therapists, as they discuss how to navigate the uncertainties of pain so you can move beyond it and get back to the activities you love most. This podcast is for Joe, Joe, and their guests to share their clinical thoughts and ideas based on their collective clinical experiences. Can this information be for you? Maybe. But we cannot know for sure. Therefore, it is always worth talking to your healthcare provider to make the best decisions in your care before you implement anything on this podcast. And please use common sense. Welcome back into the Beyond Pain Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Gambino, and I'm here with the lovely Joe Lavac. I won't throw you off this time, Joe. You can, right. you can do your wave now. <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on Instagram live at Joe Gambino DPT and Joe Lavaca there is at strength in motion underscore PT. And we also do have uh Instagram for the podcast at uh the Beyond Pain. Is it just Beyond Pain Podcast, isn't it? It is it just Beyond the, Pain Podcast. Yeah. That's it. No the, just Beyond Pain. The, no the no the and uh it is also on YouTube at Cups of Joe underscore PT. And if you want to watch the show live. And that is our intro. Then we have an application form. If you are interested in working with this, please feel free to reach that out. Either myself or Joe or whichever one of us you select on the form, uh, we will get back to you. And um, well, we're talking about manual therapy today. Well, we'll have a new BS episode. We are going two episodes in a row and recording. So we already, uh, I don't know if we have anything left to us anyway, Joe said, to talk about at the top of this episode. Uh, we did our coffee. We had a, a wonderful philosophical connection between coffee and pain. So let's just go right into it. Where do you want to start this combo? Oh, geez. I think the, the best way to start this combo, um, again, from a, from a client perspective, and we've been talking a lot about pain being so multifactorial, complex, individual, that we can just shift that same conversation to manual therapy. And I think traditionally, when our clients come in to see us and expect manual therapy or hands-on treatment, the view of that treatment is very myopic. It's very singular focused. Hey, uh, you break up scar tissue, you release a muscle, uh, but you do, or you know, we do as clinicians, something specific to that client and to their, the client's tissues that only we could do to have an effect because of all of our training. And I think that the shift or the focus now with manual therapy is just the same as pain. Manual therapy and its effects are multifaceted. They are a combination of both specific and nonspecific things, but they're related to your relationship with the provider, maybe where you are in your recovery process, maybe where you're getting manual therapy. And I mean where in the sense of body or environment. And I just don't think that we have a single well-defined mechanism for what manual therapy does, is, or targets. And maybe that's where we can start the conversation. What do you think about that? And just sort of manual therapy as you kind of describe it. I want to start this this question to you, Joe, and then we can, we can talk about those points. Um, you already kind of started um, talking about the old viewpoint of manual therapy. If you have to come up with things that you hear from your clients, your patients, mm -hmm. what would you say are the three biggest myths that your patients have when it comes to, you know, what they believe manual therapy does for them? 
Uh, well, I think again, collectively, it's probably that they think manual therapy puts them back into alignment and maybe we can put mobilization or manipulation into that category as well. Cause I think it does fit. I think that they think manual therapy will release some sort of scar tissue. And ultimately, probably manual therapy needs to be something that um, I do to them or we do to them and that it takes a very skilled provider with years and years of training to have an effect. And I would probably say those are the three biggest myths in, in the way I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with those. I mean, I do think that there is a, definitely a, from a... I'm going to say education online, so I mean, people listen to this may not know, but like when you're trying to build trust with somebody, right? Having skilled hands, soft hands, knowing where you're going to place your hands. I think, you know, when we're talking about trying to build that trust factor with, with uh, our patients and our clients, um, I think that's probably the biggest difference than anything. Um, I think if someone that feels like they don't know if your hands are going to be in the right places and you're fumbling over things, um, that it's not going to be as effective as someone who feels like they know where their hands are going next. So I would give you a little bit of a pushback on that one, but I, I do agree. I think, um, you know, self myofascial release and doing all that stuff can have similar benefit if you know where to push or something like that. Right. Um, but yes, as a break, break up tissue, well, we can't put enough force into some of the body and the same thing for alignment purposes. Um, maybe my question for you, Joe, and how you describe this to people is on the note of alignment. I think that's a, a big um, myth that people have that they're either out of alignment and need to be put back into alignment and that our hands can do that. How do you um, educate someone that comes to you for the first time is like, yeah, you know, I feel like this is harder than that. I have an entry to go till, blah, blah, blah. And I need to do core strengthening and I need you to manipulate like this and to get me back into a line. Yeah. Well, I think it, it kind of goes into this idea that your muscles exert so much force on your body. I mean, walking six, eight, 10, 12 times your body weight, right? If you're going to be doing things at the gym, jumping, plyometrics, we can maybe even account for more forces than that going through your body. So what I try to tell them is that if you are out of alignment, and I was actually able to determine that because it's also hard to determine where bony landmarks are. We know that there's not good inter-rater reliability when you and I are assessing the same person and find agreement on what hip is higher and what hip is turned or what hip is rotated. So when I tell clients that the assessment itself is unreliable, then it can't give me reliable, actionable steps for treatment. And if we're thinking about what holds your muscles in place or you know, keeps them in position, it's muscles, right? It's muscles resisting gravity, muscles resisting postural positions, muscles resisting forces. So we can use manual therapy to make you feel better. And I don't think that the, the pushback that you gave me wasn't really all that much pushback, but I think it's, it's this idea of when we look at certain studies of loved ones giving manual therapy to their spouses, we see just as good of results in reduction of pain, if not better, than when we compare that to kind of a stranger's touch. And that's kind of what we are at day one, right? We are sort of just getting to know each other. So I think that the confidence in how you handle a tissue maybe is a better way to put it, rather than I am finding a specific crevice, nuance, landmark, tendon, nerve and i'm influencing just that thing because you do bring up a good point if i am trying to build trust and i'm trying to convince people that hey manual therapy is just going to be a part of things and your your husband your spouse your friend your your loved one that you trust you can do this at home maybe you can do this with even foam rolling or or uh, tennis balls massage balls things like that if i'm going to do that and then i'm shaking as i'm holding their leg or their arm 
or I'm fumbling with my words because I'm you know, trying to speak too fast, that's not probably the way to establish good trust. And like we've said in previous episodes, come back with that idea of testing and retesting. And once you have that alliance with someone, and I had this happen this week, client came in, longstanding client, you know, comes in every other week, we train together, we've been programming, um, helping her build her strength and do all these different things for her when it comes to tennis and running. And she's feeling great, but she reached out because she had some shoulder pain that popped up last year. And we were able to sort of just train around it. And then she reached out again this week because lo and behold, it kind of came back and she felt like she was losing a little bit of range of motion. So we listened to her story, we threw her on the table, and then we just kind of palpated around. And I think I maybe have mentioned this in other episodes, but I think manual therapy, yes, is great for rapport building or therapeutic alliance enhancement. But I also think it's just great for assessment too, right? Like, hey, what side of the shoulder is irritated? What side of the shoulder is not responding to force the way we'd expect? And we did a couple of like just little like palpations, a couple of things here and there. And then just through palpation, it wasn't anything specific. And this is normally how it goes too. Her range of motion got better. Her pain went down. And we both sort of looked at each other like, okay, well, you know, you know how hard you're training and how much force you're putting into your body and how light that palpation was. So we know we didn't, you know, release anything. We know we didn't break anything down. We know that your shoulder was the same as it was, you know, five, 10 minutes ago. So what could have possibly mitigated or helped your pain? And I think that's where this whole mind body connection is really important. Did we have a nervous system response? Yeah, sure. Maybe. Did we have a psychological response? Yeah, sure. Maybe because of the trust that we have. Did somehow the touch just ease some bit of mechanical tension that I couldn't even determine and maybe reduce some sensitivity through nerves in the area? Sure, maybe. But again, it kind of comes back to that idea of pain where how do I know which one was which? I, I probably don't. And I'm gonna, just going to take advantage then of all those factors put together, at least when I'm able to work with people uh, in the clinic, right? Do you typically, or do you typically have people palpate or maybe do some touch things on themselves and then maybe guide them with foam rolling, doing what you're doing, and then come back to some test retest strategies? I'd be interested to see how you incorporate assessments with your clients. Sure. Um, so a couple of things um, before I answer that question. Um, you did say, I'm, I'm like 99% sure you said muscles, all muscles in place so that pretty sure that muscles always in place. Um, and just on that note, um, what I want to say about it is, uh, I think that the one way I explain people um, being out of alignment is like, it's almost like a holding pattern in a sense. Make sure people can have like bony discrepancies. I completely agree with you with like, for us to accurately and confidently say that someone that has one hip higher than the other is, I don't think the data Right, is there because again, right? Even like if I was to do the test a couple of times in different days, I might find different things, right? So the reliability of me doing it multiple times, or you and me, we, we might find different things um, when we assess so on. So I'm with you on that. To answer your question specifically, um, when I have somebody and I feel like manual therapy is something that's needed in and at this time, I do exactly that. Like, okay, well. You know, this area is giving you a hard time. Why don't we foam roll these areas and just see how you feel afterwards? And I think anytime we're doing manual therapy, whether it's myself doing it, whether you're doing it to yourself, you have a loved one doing it, it's always the pre-test, post-test reaction that I care about the most, right? I don't really care specifically what structures we're pressing on. You know, I can guide you and say, hey, you know, well, your knee hurts. So let's try the quad. Let's try the IT band area. Let's try... Um, I don't know, your glutes, right? Your caps. And let's see how you feel afterwards. Do one, stand up. Do you feel better, single worse? Do the next area, stand up. Do you feel better, single worse? Each one helps you feel gradually better than we'll let them all. And if one of them gives mm -hmm. this huge change, it's the only area we need to start to focus on, right? Because now we're starting to, no one has time to foam roll for 20 minutes to right. do all those corrective exercises, then be active in the way that they want. Um, and then if they have kids, um, and a blur of a job and all these other things. We're like, how do you manage all that stuff? And it's really just being as specific as possible and taking the things that have the biggest impact 
and then moving on from there. So if I can have someone roll their claws in their knees, like, wow, my knee feels so much better. It's that window of opportunity that I care about the most. And now I want to take you and load that specific One. tissue or those ranges that you were struggling with. Now, how can we get these two things to come together? Both of them are forces in different ways. They, everything we do really interacts with the nervous system in the beginning until tissue adaptations happen over time, right? Within that four to eight week window. So how can we capitalize on these things, create this better range of movements, see that hopefully, you know, what I tell people is like, sure, you're gonna phone roll now, you're gonna do these exercises, you're gonna probably feel better for an hour after a session, say. We wanna see that through a week or two weeks that that's going, that's lasting for six hours, say. And then that's going for a day, and now all of a sudden you have days where you don't feel anything, right? That's a sign that your body is starting to adapt and make changes along the way. We're not clear yet, but we're definitely on the right track. And those are those are probably the bigger themes and things I look at when I'm testing anything from a manual perspective. It's always, you know, if someone does all those areas and they're like, yeah, I feel no different, it's not. It's most likely not worth their time to continue doing that. At that point, it's not going to just magically make a difference. You know, oh, three weeks from then. Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a that's great. I do think that from a standpoint of just like having that again test retest. That's always popped up for us, and I think it's really important for clients to remember that. How do you get more data? How do you know you're moving in the right direction? Have that patient specific test. Keep coming back to it. I might say that the the, the caveat on what manual therapy foam rolling, where I really try to push people to to maybe think about doing it, is if you are unstable. Right. If you have a unstable shoulder, I don't really want you stretching because the body is going to take the path of least resistance. So before you're able to probably get a stretch through your pec, because everybody unstable loves to stretch and pull, you're probably getting a lot more translational forces into your joints. So if you're one of those people who, you know, their, their thumbs bend all the way back to their wrists, your knees bend back, your elbows bend back, um, you know, someone pulls on your shoulder and you see like a three, three inch gap between, um, you know, the top part of your shoulder bone and then your arm, you know, those are cool party tricks, but we probably don't need to be stretching those people, even though that's what they kind of crave. So if you are unstable, I'm going to push you for manual therapy. I'm going to push you for foam rolling as your tissue prep. And then there'll be, you know, different adjuncts for, for training that we should consider. but that would be where I think manual therapy is probably most beneficial if we're kind of running out of those test retest ideas, like almost kind of thinking about a person who would specifically benefit from them. And for me, it's usually those unstable clients. Yeah, like, and, and I think when, um, when Joe's referring to when he says unstable, it's people who fall very, very far on the hypermobile um, spectrum, which uh, honestly, um, I see, a great amount of it, and most people don't even realize they fall right. on that spectrum. They just know that they sure. like to stretch. They typically do yoga, like things that stretch, right? Like people like to tend to move in a direction that fits within things that are most comfortable for them. And I like that. I don't really thought about using manual more for that to make people feel better as opposed to, you know, like, I, I mean, I wouldn't have them with stretch, um, but I, I definitely am one to start to use isometrics um, in different positions to start to try to bring things down. Um, and I don't want this conversation to seem like uh, it seems like it's, I mean, I think our conversation is pretty neutral as, as manual therapy goes, but I do think that uh, it can definitely help. Uh, if I have somebody and I can put my hands on them and I think it's, it's beneficial, go find a massage therapist that, that, you, that you like in your area. A lot of people already do that. They see someone on a monthly or quarterly basis. Let's double down that. If it makes you feel good and it's going to complement what we're doing, I mean, I'm all for it, right? Um, I don't want people to think that we're, we're anti manual therapy. I think uh, Mike Stella, we had a monster, really great. You know, people do feel good with it. It helps build trust with the, with the provider. Um, or we can use that to our advantage. Um, even, and I think we're starting to learn what manual therapy is from. Uh, what kind of impact it has on the body. It's just not what we used to think it was. Um, and that's, I think, really the, why the field went so far in one direction. It's like, oh, there's research has shown that we can't make changes. And that's what we once believed. So now it's no longer relevant, which is not really the case because people still feel better and still get benefit from it. And I think it's the same thing, right? Even exercise, if we really want to break it down, because now it's all this active, you have to strengthen the stuff. Those first couple of weeks, whenever you give someone something new, you have not made strength changes to someone. It doesn't take two weeks to make those changes. Adaptations take, again, back to that 48-week window, right? So everything we do initially is neurological change. 
right? It, like you take a novice lifter, um, you put them in the gym for the first time, and all of a sudden their strength, the first three weeks, they're so much stronger than when they started. Um, but there has not really been any like physical adaptations that have happened for bigger muscle or anything like that that shows strength changes that happen, right? It takes a little bit longer for, for that to, to occur. So I think that's really the big takeaway for people is understanding that we're not making change. We keep going back into alignment. Those like myths that sit there or people believe. Um, so this way they just less rely on those things. They can use it to their benefit as they need to. They can be very specific. And, you know, I, I hate when people tell me that they fall off for 20, 30 minutes at a time. Like you don't really, you only want to like two, three minutes in an area and just move on right. to the next one. It's not that's like, it. You're not going to get more benefit by doing more than that at any point. So we can save you time so you can do other things that are more impactful and still feel good and feel like you're getting it if you find it to be uh, a large benefit. Uh, any any final thoughts for you, Joe? No, I, think the, I think that was a great summary. I, uh, I think we both kind of share a lot of the same views on manual therapy. So if you are a client that's receiving a lot of manual therapy, it's not that we're, we're trying to tell you to go run out and stop. But I would say it is your right as a patient to be asking questions about the narrative that you've been given about it. And if we kind of jump back to those, you know, maybe like three things or four things that we we're talking about, you know, are we really breaking up scar tissue? Probably not. Are we putting you back into alignment? Probably not. Uh, does there need to be a specific way to apply manual therapy to people? Or, again, in my opinion, other than maybe being confident and delivering that, you know, treatment with intent, uh, you know, I'd probably say probably not. So if it, if it is something that's holding you back, and I think that's a big key for clients, if it's holding you back rather than pushing you forward, that should maybe be worthwhile questioning either your treatment plan or maybe seeking out a couple of opinions from other providers. Love it. Love it. That's a, that's a great little wrap up there. Um, to, to set us home, Joy Boy. I love you. I love you too. Love you guys. And if you made it to this episode, extra love for you guys.